Okay guys, welcome to your fifth Android tuto Android tutorial. So the first thing we're actually going to do, we're actually going to comment out a lot of this text, a lot of this code, because I'm going to show you a shortcut that's going to, and I've brought up the fraps counter, very smart of me, but we're actually going to show you a shortcut for this layout. So we've done the button control view to set manually setting on click listener, that's a bit awkward. So if we go into the, if we double click this, it'll bring us in. So that's our button defined in our XML layout now. See the way here it's shifting? This happens all the time. You just have to X out of it and bring the layout back up. So it's shifting again, what that is. So we need to say Android. We're going to put a new property called Android on click. And then we're going to call our, met we're going to give our method a name. So we're going to say button click. Now, what this means is when this uh, button is called, it's going to do the button click method automatically. So we don't need to do any of this listener stuff. So if we create a method in our activity anywhere at all, we're going to call it public. It has to be, it has to be public void button click. And then we have to have view v. Now, We've created our method, so we're going to put our string text in here. I'm going to copy and paste that, that there. Now, as you can see, if we look at this here, our variable is in this is declared in this method, but not available in this method. So, I'm going to copy and paste that. Okay, and then if we run this, we should get the same result again but this time using a different method of finding the code. Did you have some time? Okay, press me. See? So every time that button is clicked, it's doing that now. That's a very, very handy thing to do for button clicks. Now there's all different types of layouts. We're going to go back to layouts for a bit. So this is a linear layer where the things are aligned down the way. And as I went through the layouts, our basic ones are horizontal layout aligned across the way. And we we done a little bit on gravity. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the gravity of this to center vertical as well, and that's going to put it down in the center. But see the way we're here, we have Android gravity equals center horizontal center vertical. We can just change that to center and that will cut down on two gravities and it makes things a little bit easier to understand. Okay, now here in this thing here you can actually see what it looks like on a tablet uh, in horizontal, and then if we flip the orientation it looks like in portrait mode. But we're going to work with a phone so we're going to stay with the Galaxy Nexus because it's a nice phone. And uh, Nexus one, that's it. Okay. And you can actually nest layouts inside each other. So if you want a linear layout, but you want one row of the linear layout to be horizontally linear, you can actually do that by putting a horizontal layout in a linear layout. So you've seen how to reference views and buttons. And basic buttons. Now there's lots of things you can put in scrolling views, a scroll view is a container that contains one single uh, view. Let's say it's a very big text view and it'll allow for scrolling off the page. You can put in tabs, sliding drawers, images, and time and date. So now what we want to do is we're going to take a look at resources. And we're going to go through what's called multiple resources because this is a very important thing. Building layouts is hard to build a layout when we don't have anything to build a layout for. But if we look here, we're going to notice something. If we look at our theme, we have an action bar there. We'll get that in a minute. Um, see here we have drawable, 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 drawable. We have four drawable folders, each one with the same icons. Now that's a bit bizarre looking. What happens here is that Android automatically at runtime, you know, when the app is running, 
will select the best layout depending on what's in these folders. So see the way ours is called main activity layout XML in a folder called layout. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call this folder name layout dash port. Okay? And we're going to create another new layout, a folder called layout dash land. Some of you might be able to know what this is. And we're going to say, let's, this is a portrait view of the phone, okay? So we're going to copy this, or we're going to copy this here, and put it in layout port. Paste. What about layout land? Let's make a different layout for landscape. So if we go to landscape orientation, we're now editing what this is going to look like in landscape, which is this. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go change layout, and we're going to change this to a linear layout horizontal. Okay, why didn't that work? I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll change our cells and code. Now that's actually spelled incorrectly, I know that straight off. But we're gonna see how to spell H O R I Z O N T A L. Horizontal horizontal okay so I'm very very bad at spelling and you didn't get that already okay so now they're side by side the buttons and that so if we run this again when remember how we have our set content view here Android is automatically going to this is just tell me that there's unused imports Android is automatically going to pick this folder here so when it's in landscape mode the phone it's going to automatically pick layout land the folder the file called main activity layout XML in the layout land folder and if it's in portrait mode it's going to pick the one in the layout port folder now you can also add layout land let's say XL, XL screen size you can have screen size so you can have different layouts for tablets and different layouts for handsets and this allows you to develop very dynamic UIs and it makes things very easy to flow. So, now I've made a mistake. See this main layout that out? That's a bit of an issue. Well, that's caused by you have to be in a Java file in order to run. Okay, so we're just going to delete that. Select main activity Java and select it there. If you don't do that, it just duplicates the XML file. Don't ask me what it's doing. But as you can see, our console is now telling us that it's installing the APK. And we'll just wait for a little bit. And we'll just click here to brighten up the emulator screen. Starting activity. Boom. So if we press F11 to change the orientation. I believe it's F11. Okay, so it's Control plus F11. And watch. There we go. It changed. So when the screen is actually rotated, essentially that activity went through on start, on resume, on pause, on stop, on destroy, and then rebuilt the entire layout again. So when Android a rotation changes or a configuration changes, it actually re-destroys the entire screen and rebuilds everything from the ground up. So essentially this activity was destroyed and restarted. And that's why it selected and then it detected it was in landscape mode and picked this as you can see our button still does the same thing so if we go control f11 again let's give it a second and it changes the emulator is running very sluggishly so now we're going to introduce something new and we're going to call it logging we're going to press Control shift o and get rid of all this and we can get rid of all this text here because we have our button click being done in, our, in its own unique method. Which you're actually going to move. I like having the uh, methods for buttons and stuff down the bottom of the file. So we're going to show you a little thing called logging. Now logging is a debugging activity in Android and it's very, very good. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a string here. A global string for the activity that works in our methods. So we're going to call it uh, pub or private final string 
and we're going to call it tag in capital letters equals and then we're going to say main activity okay so we've created our tag string now this is giving us an error saying that it's unused in the let which is correct so in on create we're going to set we're going to do this thing called okay log dot now there's a few different versions here we've got i d e g r i yeah so what this means is that we're going to say log dot d means uh, something log dot e means error log dot i means information log dot v dot w and that what the fuck is actually another one or uh, i think that actually stands for something else in the android documents but it's often known as what the fuck so we're going to say log i so we want our tag string so we're going to type in tag which will then reference our string up above and then our message that we want to log is on create so this is help on create okay so we know now we've got our logger and uh, Eclipse automatically imported android.util.log now what this logging does is that in the log cat see all these messages when we run our app it's actually going to say look it'll actually say in the tag here it'll give us our application name com.twistedequations.android.test in the tag file it's going to say main activity and over here it's going to say on create so we're going to create one of these for every single one on start on resume and what will happen is as the code executes it, it, it will log all these statements and by logging the statements or by creating loggers okay uh, we will see how the activity is actually behaving and then we're going to put one in here called control v and i'm going to say button clicked okay so essentially these are like little testing statements that tell you where things are, what's happening tells you what part of the code is actually executing and this is a great way of testing if if you're not sure if your if statement is executing or not or if you're not sure if your try catch block is working correctly uh, this is how you test it so we're going to click run and we're going to wait for it. and then we it will watch the uh, log cat i'm actually going to see if i can shrink this a bit move it up a bit we'll be able to see the log cat actually show up the various on start on resume will show up and we'll be able to see how the actual activity behaves this is a great way to understand it and you can play play around with this kind of thing now i use logger statements all the time you can use them to print out variables that you're not sure if the variable is correct or if your string regex isn't working you can test it with this it's brilliant it's one of my favorite things in android okay so if we go back to the console look look on create on start on resume main activity that means we are now done so if i click this look another line came up button clicked now if we rotate the screen control f11 to rotate watch this look on pause on stop on destroy on create on start on resume all execute after each other so now you can see how the activity behaves with this kind of thing now there's all kinds of uh, configuration changes even when you slide out a keyboard on a really old phone but you're not going to be developing for those that much and then we have our button click see each time i click the button it's executing this method down here and executing this statement and it's logging information now log.i means it's information okay level i and then level e will be error which means it comes up in red text so you can you know denote different things on different levels of execution so that guys has been logging and multiple resources now when we actually start building our application and building a database now this is going to become very important because in android there are a lot of things like content providers and services that we're going to actually be using but they don't have any user interface a service is a device a thing an object that runs in the background but it doesn't have any you know ui so how do we tell it's doing anything we use logging statements and it'll tell us as it's executing what's actually happening
So guys, that's been our fifth, I believe, Android tutorial. And we'll be back next time with some more.